Get ready, folks. We are talking about an incredibly powerful topic today. 100 is the new 30. I want to welcome Dr. Jeffrey Gladden to the live stream. How you doing? How you doing? Hey, good to see you, Carrie. Great to be here. Thank you. It's great to be here. I'm going to just literally throw you some softballs because this is like your your genius zone i mean oh my gosh this guy dr glad and he knows his stuff when i read his book it blew my mind and first of all dr glad uh, i want to ask what inspired this this book uh you know this book was inspired by um my own journey right my own journey of getting sick in my 50s <clears throat> going in being tested when i was putting on weight exhausted being stressed, getting depressed, developing brain fog, cardiology practice, multiple things going on, building hospitals, cath labs, building a group. Um, and I was told, hey, you know what? Your, uh, your tests all come back looking normal. You're just getting older. Why don't you take an antidepressant? And I had heard from my grandmother for years, literally at that point, Jeff, it's hell to get old. You never want to get old. And then for the first time in my 50s, it was starting to happen to me. And I thought, okay it's hell to get old. I'm not going to do this. So that's when I made a big shift and actually um, threw myself into interventional integrative medicine, if you will. And after about two and a half years, I was able to crack the code for myself. And I figured mm -hmm. out all the problems I had. I was able to solve them. And I thought, you know what, if I can feel this good, I wonder how good I can be. I wonder how good I can be. And that really became the nidus for me leaving cardiology world. I had 10 offices, 12 doctors, had co-founded a heart hospital on medical device company boards, et cetera. I left all that behind because I wanted to pursue this idea that we could live young for a lifetime. I did not want to go down that path and I don't want other people to have to go down that path. So that was really the nidus for developing what's become Gladden Longevity. And then it's culminated in the release of this book, 100 is the New 30, how playing the symphony of longevity will enable us to live young for a lifetime. I love it. I love how it's born out of a personal struggle. I feel like it's super authentic. Wow. Um, I love the fact that you are a disruptor. Uh, I'm going to show people your website because when I go to your website, I can see how big this really is. And we're going to take a quick peek at this. Of course, you got the book, but you're not, you're not a theorist. In fact, you're somebody who um, I, I follow you online. I look at what you're doing. You have some crazy cool machines. Um, if people come to the longevity uh, clinic, you know, the Gladden Longevity, what, what will they experience? Yeah. So, you know, there are many programs out there that claim to be talking about longevity, right? And they use the word, I think the word is kind of misused in many respects. Uh, it could be anything from Botox to hormone replacement therapy to we're going to do some genetic testing and test your gut biome and give you an epigenetic age. And now this is your longevity plan. Um, <clears throat> in our world, we have access to many, many, many technologies, right? Virtually any technology that you've heard about, we have access to. We either have it in the clinic or we have access to it. And yet what really distinguishes us <clears throat> is that we're committed to answering the questions. How good can I be? How do I make 100 to new 30? How do I live well beyond 120? And how do I live young for a lifetime? So when com someone comes to see us, we begin with what are your aspirations, right? Mm -hmm. What are your hurdles that you perceive? What's your past medical history? What are the things that you're worried about? What are the things that you really want to optimize? <clears throat> and then we build out a program for them around that to meet those needs. And it could be as simple as, hey, can you fix my shoulder? Can you recover me from a concussion? Yes, we can do that. Or I want to be 30 again, right? Take me back in time. So you it depends on the question you're asking. Then we build a program to actually <clears throat> take you where you want to go. And that's what distinguishes us is it's a custom fit for each individual. Uh, it's very high touch. Um, and we go down the rabbit hole with anybody. Somebody comes to us with something that's unusual. We go down the rabbit hole. It's not like, well, we just have this fixed program. You'll have to go down the street. No, we actually go down the rabbit hole and figure it out with the person. We've done that over and over and over again. So we love that. I mean, our, our greatest joy is seeing clients do well. And the only way they do well is if you really follow them on their journey and go with them. Right. So that's the idea. One of the things I like about you, Dr. Gladden is you, you walk the talk. So 
people look at you. Uh, I go to your website. I see you skiing. I see you in the water. I see you in the air. I mean, you are someone who is literally living a life of adventure. Is that uh, kind of tell me the backstory of that? Have you always been adventure seeking or do you feel like you need to develop the body that supports that lifestyle? Tell us more. Yeah, that's a great question. <clears throat> well, really, as a, as a young kid, uh, there were two things about me. One, I remember being three years old, walking down the street, coming back from the pond, debating the existence of God, and sometime deciding that <clears throat> in my life I was going to become wise. And that's kind of become a lifelong passion for me. The other one is I love being in motion. I love being in motion. When I was a kid, I also wanted to grow up and be a race car driver. Uh, I love speed. I love being kinetic. And so <clears throat> as I evolved into that, I played basketball, soccer. Then I picked up skiing. Then that transferred into mountain biking and snowboarding and then surfing and body surfing and running. And so I love to be in motion. And <clears throat> what I find is that um, one of the keys to longevity is actually living young. So I wake up 27 every day. Right. I'll be 70 at my next birthday, chronologically. Oh, we'll have oh a big, my God. Have a big party. But I wake up 27 every single day. And the reason that's so important is because if I don't feel 27, my reference point is 27. I go back to being 27. I don't say, well, you know, but you're good for your age or you're better than most people your age or look what you can still do. I don't acquiesce to the aging process. I say, no, I'm 27. So with that mindset, it drives me into continuing to be active. And so I love, I'm better, I'm a better mountain biker now than I ever was. I'm a better snowboarder than I ever was. I'm a better surfer than I ever was. And I'm picking up new skills and, and training my nervous system in new ways to actually go into flow states and do other things that are just quite magical. So it's, it's really this misnomer that as we go through the chronological process that we have to lose capability is completely wrong. I'm actually gaining capability, and that's just super fun and super exciting. I love that. That is unbelievable. I cannot believe that you are moving on 70 with the chronological age. You know, some people are not familiar with um, this whole thing of a biological age versus a chronological age. Because I see we have some great people here watching, and this thing's going to go on all kinds of different platforms. Talk to people who might be very new in this process, who might be thinking, yeah, but my genes are bad. You know, talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, that's a great question. So, <clears throat> you know, we all have a chronological age. Um, we also know that people age at different rates. And so there have been tests that have been developed to give people an idea of where they sort of stand in the aging process, their approximations. And this has been equated to what's a biological age. Mm -hmm. One of the most prominent currently <clears throat> is um, how certain molecules are attached to your DNA and patterns that correlate with the aging process. Uh, Steve Horvath at UCLA developed this uh, aging clock, if you will, it's a DNA methylation clock uh, an epigenetic clock, as it's referred to. And <clears throat> so people will have that test done and they'll say, well, you know, my my quote unquote biological age is I'm five years younger than my chronological age. So that's good. I'm good. I'm really good. But what we've come to understand is that that's not true. It's actually it's actually a misnomer because we are a mosaic of ages. I have a brain age, a heart age, a blood vessel age, a bone age, a muscle age, a liver age. Right. I have an immune system age. I have a telomere length age. I have an epigenetic age, several epigenetic ages, in fact. And then I have senescent cell burdens and I have other things that are going on in my body that actually equate much more to the aging process than to the just being healthy process. So at Glad Longevity, we dive into four areas. One is life energy, which think of that as a psycho-spiritual space, incredibly important. Then we dive straight into longevity. <clears throat> what are the drivers of aging, right? What are the processes inside your body that are actually driving aging? We go straight at those. And then we look at health, right? All the different metrics of health and then performance. How well can you perform? Are you fast, agile, strong, quick, balanced? Do you have good reaction times? Do you have good cardiovascular capacity? I just finished doing a cardiovascular capacity test and walked in to record this. I'm excited to see the results. So <clears throat> the last time I tested, I was in an exceptional category for somebody in their 30s. Um, and so we want to see what we can do, right? So the point is that if you're listening to this, I want you to 
dispel this myth that's been perpetrated throughout society, the medical establishment, the government, and everything else, that chronological aging is equated to decline. It doesn't have to be. We're the first generation not to have to go down that same path. And we all saw our grandparents go down and our parents go down, but we don't have to do that. So it's really a, it's a massive opportunity. I love the mosaic of ages. I think you're so right. You know, I, I'm, I spend time with people my own age and different ages as well, but I'm 47, something like that. I forget exactly sometimes. 46, 47, maybe 46, I don't know. But the point is that uh, there are people who are my age who are very old. They think old. You you can see like they walk upstairs and they're and they're and they're like holding their chest. Talk to us a little bit about the change of health over the last you know hundred years. Like why are we, you know, what are some trends and 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 why are the reasons for these trends? Well, I think your question is, um, you know, if well, I think your question has to do with aging and health and where we are in that process. I think. You know, when it comes to health, of course, there's been massive strides made in our ability to treat acute illnesses, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's malaria, infection, you know, penicillin came along, surgery for, a, you know, ruptured gallbladder, you know, whatever it is. We've had lots of technological advances in that. And the, the healthcare system, as we refer to it, is not a healthcare system. It's actually a sick care system. And nobody has health insurance. Everybody has sick insurance because it's really mm -hmm. only there when you get sick. So... It's important to understand that although we've developed a lot of strategies to take care of things acutely, the strategies that have been developed inside of our current system really do a terrible job of optimizing health or helping us to live young. It's really about getting you back to where you were, but not making you anti-fragile to where you get back to where you're stronger than you were when you meet some unexpected stress, right? So, so in our world, and the world I practiced for 25 years as a cardiologist, right, um, was all about sick care. But now I want to focus on optimization. So in the world of optimization, there's been a lot done here through the ages, right? People that meditate, people that control stress, people that can control their body's energy and things like this have had, you know, amazing responses in terms of their longevity and their health, their immune system function, et cetera. Those things remain the same. Those ancient wisdoms remain the same. <clears throat> Then there's diet and nutrition and sleep and exercise. And you can never get away from those. Those are those are foundational to health. But everybody that exercised and ate better and, you know, got a Fitbit and learned how to sleep and whatever else, you know, they still got old and they still died. So what's exciting about where we are now is that technologies are coming along to actually attack the aging process directly. And there are currently 16 hallmarks of aging that have been described uh, there were nine in 2003. There were five more added in March of last year, another one added in November, and another one in July. And so these are the, the expressions of aging and consequently the drivers of aging simultaneously. And this is where we focus when we're talking about longevity. Most longevity clinics don't do anything in this area. They're looking at either cosmetics or optimizing hormones, things that decline with aging they're trying to replace all very good, but they're not actually going at the heart of the matter, which is what is going on with the aging process. And that's where we really distinguish ourselves. Your book is incredible. It's 544 pages. And I want people to realize like this guy, Dr. Gladden, I mean, he went, this is his opus. This is a, this is a work of art. This is a legacy. This is a gift. If you have people in your life that are not aging well, you need to show that you love them by getting them this tool. I want to show a little bit of your IP because it's incredible. It is protected by the way, but I think that this just shows how nobody out there is, uh, is seeing what, what we're seeing. Um, maybe you point to me, uh, let's even talk about maybe this one you mentioned it, the mosaic of health. And this is, I'm a visual guy. Maybe you can unpack what we're uh, looking at. Here. Yeah. <clears throat> so basically uh, we have, we all have a number of health things that are critical to us. And this is one of two health slides. And these health slides are meant to be representative, not exhaustive. That being said, um, having a healthy gut biome is now a hallmark of aging. People's gut biomes change as they age. And so being able to go in and analyze your gut function, what's your stomach function, what's your digestive enzyme function, your gallbladder function, how's your small bowel working, 
Do you have leaky gut? What's the bacterial flora in your colon and your large intestine? Do you have bacterial overgrowth or yeast overgrowth back into the small intestine that's disrupting many things? So when you really want to optimize gut health, you have to unravel the knot. And this is true for everything that we go into is first we have to understand it and unravel the knot of what's going on. Then we can rescue the situation, then we can rejuvenate it, and then we can optimize it. And that's kind of our thought process. So the digestive system goes into that, the esophagus and the stomach, the thyroid. The thyroid is so, 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 so often misdiagnosed. I was misdiagnosed. My thyroid blood tests looked within normal range. And yet when I did biometric testing, testing that looks at what's the thyroid doing at the cellular level, I was very hypothyroid. That's why I was exhausted. I couldn't get out of bed in the morning hardly. So the other thing that we found out with genetics is that I don't convert inactive thyroid to active thyroid in my brain very efficiently at all. So when I know that, I know that when I take thyroid replacement, I need to be taking T3 and T4 and in certain ratios and certain amounts to get my brain to work properly. When I started doing that, it was like the lights came back on. It was it was remarkable. And yet and we've done this for people with concussions. They, they have a concussion. They work with a concussion center at a well-known university hospital here in Dallas, you know, for six weeks, eight weeks. They're not making any progress. They come in. We test them. It's like, oh, well, you know what? Your brain can't convert inactive thyroid to active thyroid. Let's put you on some T3. They're not hypothyroid, but let's give your brain something that it needs. A week later, they can't believe the progress this person's making. They now resume their job, their life, right? So it's really, it's about not, it's not about having answers. It's about having the right questions. And that's what we do. So in those areas that you highlighted on that circle, we go in and ask the questions, what's going on here? How do we optimize it? I love that. The right questions. That is so good. You know, you, you recently, (laughs) I went on my social media. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Um, I want to show the picture. Um, This is the picture of Times Times Square, you're on a huge building. You were able to speak at NASDAQ. I just saw yesterday that you were at some event, some conference. I was I watched your social media. Why do you think there's this huge uh, interest of longevity? I think recently, but why do you think people are starting to pay attention? I think it's um, the fact that people are starting to realize that there are alternatives to traditional sick care medicine and that it is possible to live differently. And I'll tell you the, the, the real magic in this is that um, there's a couple things. One is, you know, we're at a disadvantage when we think about our own aging because we think aging is linear, right? It's a linear slope going down every year, another birthday, I'm another year older. I don't feel that much different. Um, and yet aging is actually exponential. And we see that all around us. We know that people between 70 and 80, 80 and 90 age so much faster than people in between 30 and 40 and 40 and 50. And yet we can't relate to it, right? You can't imagine that that's going to be you. And the other thing that puts us at a disadvantage is not only can we intellectually have a hard time relating to it, but we can't feel it. For example, Carrie, if I'm going to ask you, what are you going to be like 10 years from now, right? What are you going to be like 15 years from now? It's almost impossible for any of us to imagine. Listeners, if you're listening, ask yourself the same question. It's almost impossible to imagine you're going to be any different than you are right now. Right. And so we're in a game of exponential decline and we can't feel it. We don't relate to it. (laughs) And yet we know that we want to stay young. So we develop strategies of I'm going to start biohacking. I'm going to take the next shiny object and I'm going to get healthier. I'm going to sleep better and exercise and lower stress. And that becomes a linear strategy to an exponential problem. So (laughs) what people are realizing is that they need an exponential solution for an exponential problem. And when you do that, all of a sudden you can stay young, you can live young for a lifetime. And what's the net effect of that? This is the beautiful, this is the most beautiful thing. If you only take one thing away from this, I want to tell you how life has changed on the planet. Exponential decline in aging. And yet our impact and our opportunity goes up exponentially every decade we're alive and healthy, right? Every decade we're contributing more, doing more, more opportunities come to us for having a bigger impact. And when those lines cross, you can go on for a bit, but then your opportunities and your impact crater too. And eventually you end up in a nursing home with somebody that loves you coming to visit you, right? And that's a fate none of us want. On the other hand, if you live young for a lifetime, 
your exponential rise continues. And the return on investment for orchestrating your finances, orchestrating your environment, orchestrating your life to be able to focus on the real game of staying young is paid back a thousand times over. And when people see that and understand that, it's like, oh my gosh, yes, I focus on wealth because I want to get wealthy. Most people are thinking about that. But, you know, 29 billionaires died in 2022. And on average, they live three and a half years longer than the average person. They died of the same things everybody else does. Cancer, heart disease, right? Kidney. And so the point is you can win the wealth game, but what did you actually accomplish? I think there's so much more to be accomplished if you win the live young for a lifetime game because your return is so massive and you get to live young. Not only do you get to survive, you get to live young. You get to snowboard with your great grandkids. You get to do whatever you want to do, right? I can do whatever I want to do. If I want to go run four miles, I'll go run four miles. But whatever I want to do, I can do. And so that's the beauty of being alive. And I'm doing more things now than I did, you know, in business or medicine or anything else than I did in my entire career. And that's going to continue to grow. And so it's a new reality, a new future. And once people get a get a glimpse of that, I think this is part of what's driving people to want to seek out longevity medicine. Yeah. And I think it's really a big. Let me share Let me share this here. Um, I echo what you're saying when you just said that you're snowboarding, you're mountain biking, the best you've ever done. I'm cycling the best I ever have. I went to France this summer and I'll tell you what, while I'm going up those mountains, I'm looking to my right and my left and I'm seeing a few guys that are younger than me, slower. And then I'm looking ahead and I'm actually seeing some guys. I'm not even kidding. 60, 70. I even think I saw a guy in his eighties up the tour de France routes. Um, how come age is like this thing today that I, I almost think like it's not accurate anymore? The the chronological. Have you seen that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. It, yeah. Chronological age has never really been accurate. To your point, there are some people with a mindset of, you know, I'm old when they're 35 and they, they're waiting another 40 years to die. Right. Famous Benjamin Franklin quote. And then <clears throat> and then there are people that are 75 going on 80 that feel like they're 25 and it's like, yeah, let's go. You want to go dancing? Yeah, let's go. You know, we're, we're going to go cycle in France. I'm in. Right. So mindset plays such a massive role here. This is why the life energy psycho spiritual space is so important to this. Right. So if you believe you're old, you're old. If you believe you're young and you ask the right questions, you'll get there. I love it. So let me ask this question. I know we got about six minutes left. This is a groundbreaking book. Uh, I know that lots of people are just starting to get it. It just came out. The audio book, I'm told, I got to tell you this, but our audio book producer, uh, Dave Samuel, said that he's uh, finished editing it. So this thing's going to be coming soon. That's got to be a long audio book. Uh, but I like long audio books. Um, uh, I think it was uh, Warren Buffett's is 30 hours. Your, yours won't be that long. But my question is, what do you see with Glad and Longevity? Like, I think God put you in this earth for a reason. I think I, I see you just like starting to like, I mean, I know you've been successful, but I, I do see this curve coming. What do you think is next for you, for Glad and Longevity, for your patience? Yeah, well, I think, <clears throat> I think what we're really 100% focused on is cracking the code on aging, right? And so we're, we're building research platforms. We're partnering with universities. We're doing all kinds of really interesting things on the research fronts because we're 100% dedicated to cracking the code. Mm -hmm. That's one piece of it. And then we bring that information into the clinic, of course, where we can take care of clients. The other thing, though, is I want to expand Glad Longevity to go global. I want it to become a global company so that we have offices around the world where people can access us. And the, the thing beyond going global um, is that I really want people to go down a completely different glide path of aging than what mm -hmm. they've gone before. So I want to democratize this information. We have a podcast, the Glad and Longevity podcast. We just recorded uh, our 200th episode a few weeks back, and we release one every every Thursday. So if you like information about things like this, uh, they're great. They're great podcasts. They're usually about 50 minutes, maybe an hour and 10 minutes long. 
Um, but I want to democratize the information and I want to change people's consciousness about what aging, chronological aging is and isn't. And I want people to not have to suffer the decline that lead them to say, it's hell to get old. I don't ever want to get old, right? Mm -hmm. I want to change that narrative uh, because I think really it's about us reclaiming our birthright to live young for a lifetime. So we're all on a hero's journey and our heroes, my hero's journey is for us to be able to reclaim our birthright to live young and unencumbered for a lifetime. So I love that. Carl Jung, Swiss psychologist, um, asked the question, what's the most damaging thing uh, in, the, in, in the life of a child? And um, I didn't know the answer to the question. I thought it was abuse, alcoholism, abandonment. He said it was the unlived life of the parent. The unlived life of the parent, most damaging thing. I think you're onto this. I think that if a young person, <clears throat> I mean, let's face it, my son's 18. I can go play football with his friends and some of their other dads can't even get off the couch. Talk about what that legacy is as you're seeing with your clients when they're on fire well it's it's fascinating in several respects i i in my own story right i had gotten in my 50s i got to a point where i didn't think i was going to be able to keep up with my kids anymore um and that was such an existential moment for me and then after i was able to crack the code for myself and solve those issues and then get on this path my son chris <clears throat> who's now uh, 39 um you know, his comment to me was, uh, it's like we got you back. It's like we got you back, Dad, right? It's like we got you back. And think about that. Think about that for yourself, right? Think about your family getting you back. Think about your ability to participate. Think about being able to play with them, teach them, show them. And the, really the goal here is if you're living young for a lifetime, is in my mind, is to have a 30-year-old body and a 300-year-old mind where you accumulate all the wisdom, all the know-how, all the relationships, right? All the goodness that you can bring forward. And yet you have a 30 year old body to do it in. What's the impact of that for your family, right? For your companies, for your community. It's, it's, it's really exponentially, exceptionally cool. So. That's awesome. Well, we're going to land the plane here, folks. You just heard he's got a clinic. He's got a podcast. The book's coming out. He's democratizing this incredible value when he could just hold, hold it tight and you need to get the book. I mean, seriously, uh, you can see right here. I purchased one <laughs> the day it came out. I cannot lie. September 5th, when I was able to get an early copy, man, I bought one and, uh, and I'm the publisher, but you got, you got on Kindle, you got on paperback, you got on a hardcover, um, the book is fantastic. This, these are these are just some of the benefits you're going to get. And uh, Dr. Gladden, I'm going to uh, throw it back at you and, and basically just say you get you get the last word. And what would you want to tell people who think maybe too much time, too much money, too complicated? What would you address those obstacles? Yeah, I think it's um, it it really requires a mindset shift, right? because we're all so focused on taking care of the urgent things in front of us. Well, I've got to get the kids here or do that or pay for college or do this or do whatever else. Right. So we leverage our health for the sake of building a family, building a business, doing all these things. And yet the wealth that we build isn't going to save you. Right. It's, it's money. People have a misconception of money. It's not a, it's not an asset. It's a resource. The asset is your health, your youthfulness, right? Mm -hmm. Your 30 year old body and your 300 year old mind, that's your asset. Your wealth is there as a resource to basically support your assets. And when you have that, you have a chance to you know, earn as much money as you want in the future. So I think if you have a mindset shift away from, I need to be urgently focused on these things, I can't fit this into my life. I think rethink that and think, okay, I'm gonna, I, I did that for a while. Let me take a fresh slate. Let me reprioritize my life. What's really important? Where do I want to be 10 years, 15, 20, 50 years from now? And how do I want to be living my life? What puts me on that trajectory? If you start out and you get your mindset straight about, okay, I'm going to ask bigger questions, right? How do I live young? How good can I be, et cetera? Then that will, that will enable you to actually construct your life and your environment to start to support that mission. But it starts with that that heartfelt mindset shift. And I think that's where you begin. 
Folks, Dr. Jeffrey Gladden, check it out. His website, we're putting it in the, um, here it is, gladdenlongevity.com. We have the book. Go ahead, click the link, and uh, you need to get this. In fact, I would tell you that you can't afford not to get it. You're going to pay a price. You're either going to pay a price of good health or you're going to pay a price of bad health, and nobody wants that. So, Dr. Gladden, thank you so much. And I know we will not, uh, this is not the last time we're going to hear from you. I feel like, I feel like you're blowing up here, man. Appreciate it. Thanks. Great to see you, Kerry. Yeah. All right, folks. Take care. Have a great day. We'll see you.